Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 where I'm continuing my shuttle constructed Mars mission where instead of building the International Space Station, the shuttle could have been used to build an International Mars mission. These launches all occur during live streams on Twitch and the music is from a shuffle playlist so sometimes it fits great, other times not at all. Both the launches this time will involve transferring xenon gas to our mission so that it can be topped off before we send it off to Mars, give ourselves the best possible Delta V situation. And in both cases we are using the new tug that I designed. Unfortunately I had the engine of the tug on in the cargo bay, that was not right. And so here I am shutting it down. Actually that was fortunate because I didn't really want to have the tug fully fueled, we only need half of its fuel there. so. Wasting that fuel was not a big problem as far as conducting the mission is concerned. Anyway, so here we are making orbit. Now I did get your comments about um, the OMS engines on the tug and where I should put them. So I'm going to uh, do a Mark II version of the tug where I place the OMS thrusters on the bottom instead of on the back. But that'll come later. Uh, for now, we had that little problem with the Centaur stage and the payload popping out of the cargo bay. Radar Nick figured out that that was because the bottom of the Centaur stage was actually, was actually clipping the cargo bay at the bottom. And so I have to shift that up for the next mission, which I do. Um, that's because the node at the back of the shuttle's cargo bay was not centered. So maybe, maybe I ought to change that. I'll take a look at that. But anyway... Uh, the Centaur stage did not complete our transfer, and that's because the tug had a little bit more fuel than it ought to have had. And so we're completing the transfer here, and then making orbit around the moon. Now, turns out that maybe this is not the best strategy to try and rendezvous with our mission, because basically we spend some delta V to make orbit around the moon, and then we have to spend another like 700, 800 meters per second to do a radial shift to meet up with the mission, and on the next launch, we end up just going straight for the mission, finding a... We, we happen to find a good location to do um, velocity matching burn that both brought us into orbit and got us uh, to the station. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be possible every single time. So here we go. Uh, for the first time delivering something to our mission in orbit around the moon, we don't need one of the little tugs to bring us in. This tug, it was, you know, getting close to finishing up its fuel, but it managed to have enough fuel to dock and bring the payload in. Six tons of xenon gas here, but the mission overall carries about 50 tons, so we're about half full on the xenon gas. Uh, maybe a little less than half full, so we're gonna need a few more trips to bring enough gas. And then the tug dumps off the the xenon gas tank, which is supposed to be on a suborbital trajectory towards a crash landing on the moon, but I think that one was a little bit too high. That was like 20 kilometers. There are parts of the moon that are pretty darn high. Maybe it'll end up being disposed of. Anyway, here I am docking up again with this tug, and all is well. It fulfilled its mission, what it was meant to do, using methane and oxygen. No, no radiators. And no solar panels. It has enough battery to last for about two weeks without solar panels. And uh, the boil off was not too consequential. It has service module tanks. You saw right there that I actually had to dump fuel from the shuttle because it had too much fuel coming down. And that's because we're not going to a high orbit or an inclined orbit or anything like that. Uh, so even though we're carrying up a reasonably heavy payload, um, we're not really pushing the limits of the shuttle and we had a lot of OMS fuel left. Turns out I didn't dump quite enough because we still ended landing short, uh, aiming for Orlando instead of Cape Canaveral. So here I am uh, preparing for landing at Orlando instead. I should really just put a runway there. It's not an approved shuttle landing location, I don't think, but it sure would be handy. It happens to be in the right place for an undershoot. Again, I'm still working on the descent script. I don't know why it's doing this. It's very unpredictable for some reason when it uh, goes short and long sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get quite the end there. For some reason, the recording froze at about that point, so I didn't get the full stop. But anyway, uh, it did work out. This, however, did not. 
and considering it's basically the identical mission except with the centaur stage shifted up, not sure why this happened. In a little bit, you know how it is. There we go. Um, yeah. And no, the F3 dialogue didn't give me any hints as to what went wrong there. And it's especially suspicious since this has launched properly before. I decided to give it one more go. I maybe I needed to restart the game. There was something else going on here. Because there was nothing really for me to fix, per se. Considering this worked a few times before. Not so much. So it happens right there, obviously. Whatever happens, happens right about there. And it's quite dramatic. No question about that. This time uh, there was an interesting uh, foible, if you will. Uh, one of the parts after everything exploded. The centaur tank in particular decided to reach really high velocities vertically. Very impressive, but more impressive was on the way back down. I, I, I suppose you can guess what's going to happen here. Indeed, the Centaur's tank showed incredible resiliency, uh, basically just plopping on the ground at the bottom of its arc. And yeah, might need to talk to somebody about cheaty parts here. <laughs> that seems That seems rather interesting. Don't know about all that. But anyway, we shifted back to the regular KSC launch pad instead of 39A from the real KSC pack. And this time the launch worked just fine. So something about that launch pad was just not working out today for us. I say today, but you know, we had that other earlier launch, so I don't understand really. Actually, that was probably in previous days, so maybe it really was just, uh, this was on Saturday, so. It was just a Saturday thing. Anyway, essentially the same payload. But as we have now seen, no matter how similar you try and make things, KSP has a tendency to create drama all on its own. So here we go again. And this time the Centaur stage was not clipping into the bottom of the bay, so it exited semi-gracefully. Unfortunately, my rear RCS thrusters, one set for some reason, decided not to get enabled properly and so the shuttle went tilted like that when trying to do its collision avoidance maneuver, we'll call it. So here we go. There was also a weird glitch on the surface there. It's not supposed to be ocean like that in a straight line. That's because we had to go to the tracking station again and come back to the mission. So I guess it failed to build things properly. Other than that, things went well and we did need a mid-course maneuver but on plotting that, I found out that we could directly approach the International Mars mission and just immediately match its orbital velocity around the moon. And so I did that, and so it only took about 800 meters per second to match velocities with it instead of doing two separate burns. And maybe we can manage this in future tries, or maybe it was just this particular trajectory happened to give us that opportunity, I don't know. So we'll have to see. And here we are approaching the mission, and it was a very smooth docking, and you can see we've got a lot of extra Delta V to spare this time, thanks to that. So, nice overall. And this docking, after we transferred the Xenon gas in and dumped the tank, uh, convinced me that we could do something that has been pending for quite a while now. So here we are dumping the tank, this time on a proper suborbital trajectory. And redocking, of course, the tug. But we have had an issue with the center solar panels, and I gave the audience an opportunity to vote on whether they wanted me to fix those center solar panels, and it came out pretty close. But I warned them that it was going to take half an hour to an hour or something like that, and I wish that had been true. <laughs> but here I've removed the propulsion section, the ion engines, and if you remember, we needed that little tug to bring in the propulsion section because it had run out of liquid oxygen. It now has liquid oxygen, so it can control itself. So we're just gonna set that tug aside. 
And it's no longer going to be part of the body of the mission now. And after it's cleared off, we'll redock the propulsion section. This tug is just going to sit here waiting to swoop in again in order to grab the center solar panels, which you can see are askew there, and try and straighten them up. So here we are now actually pulling the back section off. That's uh, more than 50 tons right there. So all of the xenon, well, not all of the xenon gas tanks, but most of the xenon gas tanks and the rear solar panels and the ion engines all being pulled away. And then we'll have the tug go in and hopefully everything will just stay in line. That's the ideal situation. Fortunately, of course, our RCS thrusters are not placed ideally on this vehicle. There aren't RCS thrusters all over the place. And so here we go, rotating the panels. This little tug has enough trouble managing with this single solar ray module. That's why I wanted to have the other tugs that are physically larger and have more leverage. So I wanted them present in order to handle the larger section of the mission. You know, the front side is like 100 tons, so... Very important to have good RCS control over that. And actually, we'll when we put things together, we'll be using that side to do the docking instead of trying to use the propulsion section. So here we go. Things seem lined up and they dock, thankfully. And so that part is fixed. We move the little tug off again, though it wants to have a different rotation than I want it to have. And now we have to get the rear portion, 54 tons I think it was, to dock with the rest of this. And it takes a few tries. I didn't realize how long it took while I was doing it because I was so focused on trying to get it done. You can see it looks pretty close here, but uh, because the thrusters aren't, you know, properly placed, I constantly have to back away and uh, approach again. You can't just sort of try and maneuver it side to side perfectly. But watching the video, I discovered that it actually took two hours in total. Half an hour for the first attempt. So I think, are we gonna dock here now? Is this the first attempt that works? Or, um, let's see. See, I'm bringing in very gingerly. Trying not to miss. Is it gonna work this time? Okay, that, that looks promising. Okay, that, that, that's it, right? Yeah, except when I zoomed out, because I was so focused on it zoomed in, I didn't realize it, it was askew. So I had to do it all over again. So getting it to that point took half an hour. And then I undocked reluctantly to try and fix it again. And yes, you think, well, first of all, of all you have to back it off in order to reset the docking ports. You can't just roll right there and try and bring it in again because the docking ports need to be reset. And things went horribly wrong. <laughs> uh, I forget if I was trying to use the propulsion module in the tail in order to align that or not, but that would have definitely caused a problem. In either case, we have the RCS all at one end instead of, you know, evenly mounted along the vehicle. So here we are. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? You would think so. But after that first attempt with half an hour, it took another hour and a half to figure this out. Okay. And you can see it's sort of drifting off to one side, can't you? Oh, no, no, it's, it's getting back there. Is it, is it gonna work this time? I think this, this is the one. And then there's the whole docking port snap thing. We used force roll on Smart ASS to make sure that the roll was steady while I was trying to manage the rest of the axes. But anyway, everything is good, so I wanted to decommission the tug on the nose. Unfortunately, the tug on the nose had run out of fuel already, so we needed this other tug, which I had put in standby again, to grab the tug that was out of fuel and then deorbit them both. Again, the problem with these tugs, even though they're really cute and have been very helpful, was that they had a large part count. And so our new tugs are going to replace them. 
And I'll also give a little bit better control over the situation. So here it is deorbiting and these tugs will no longer be in service. And after all that, I didn't have enough energy for another shuttle launch, but we did at least need to bring back the shuttle, lest we had forgotten about that. So here we go. Once again, fuel needed to be dumped. It had too much left over. And I was, of course, trying to dump a little bit more this time in the hope that we wouldn't land short. And sure enough, the end result was that we went long. So here we are approaching Tampa Bay there. Still want to add the city of Tampa to that though. At this height, I don't know if we would ever actually see it properly because I think the render distance for one of those Kerbal Constructs assemblies is 100 kilometers. I know you can set it to higher than that, but may I'll have to think about whether I want to do that or not because the rest of the terrain goes generic at 100 kilometers. So it sort of pops out at you if you try and give it uh, visibility higher than that. Anyway, so I had to do some serious gliding on this to get it back home. And I didn't think I was going to make it. I mean, you can see we're only at 2 kilometers height, uh, still quite a ways away. But somehow, I don't know how, we managed to fly it in. And I couldn't get to a proper runway landing. Sort of a skew here. But I just wanted to be able to stop on the runway. And it... I had no problem with uh, being too fast this time. It's um, we'll, we'll have to call it ground effect that the shuttle was able to stay aloft at all. The collider away from the runway is a little bit off. You can see it's a little bit unbalanced. We might have actually popped a tire or something. I don't know. It stays unbalanced even if we get once we get to the runway. So anyway, so that's how it all shaped up for these two missions with the shuttle. Lots of drama, many, some explosions this time, but we got the job done, and it's gonna be a slog, but we'll uh, keep at it. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did enjoy the video please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.